What's up, guys? Hope everybody's doing really, really well. I want to read you guys a devotional from my devotion. Um, it's called Refuse to Lose, How to Win in the Game of Life. So if you want to grow, if you love sports and you want to grow in your walk uh, with the Lord, I definitely would recommend it. It's definitely a, it's a weekly devotional, so definitely check it out. Uh, you'll be able to check it out on Amazon or on my website, um, TravisWilson.org. Um, but Amazon's probably quicker. Uh, but yeah, definitely, definitely go check it out. Um, I think it's a great way for you to be able to learn different sports, but also, most importantly, grow in your relationship with Jesus Christ. And I think that's a great way for you to be able to learn Christian principles as you move forward in your daily walk uh, with the Lord. So I want to read you guys a devotional, um, and it's called, and it's from week eight, called The One Who Teaches. Players play on the field, court, pool, ice rink, track, etc. Players score goals, baskets, kills, etc. Athletes must play with a certain level of focus and effort. Also, they must execute, execute the game plan with a certain level of excellence necessary to win. Players make jokes in the locker room. Players bond together as teammates outside of the games and practices. Tickets, ticket offices sell tickets to, ama to amazing fans who are extremely excited about the upcoming season. Fans cheer, encourage, and root on their favorite team to victory. Staff members ensure that operations within the organization flows smoothly. Executives hire the right staff and signs the athletes necessary to form a competitive team. Players, staff members, and ex executives and fans are integral in building championship rosters, but there's one missing piece. Coaches. Coaches are very important pieces to the championship puzzle. Why is that? They do a phenomenal job of drawing X's and O's all while game planning with efficiency. He or she know how to emotionally connect with his or her players. They demand respect. He or she knows how to balance discipline and compassion. They, bat they bring bat the best out of their players in every way. They know how to encourage and motivate with a level of consistency. He or she cares about his or her players' well-being. He or she wants his or her players to excel on and off the court, track, field, ice rink, and pool. They have a great eye for talent. He or she knows how to effectively communicate and teach. Also, they are leaders of men and of women. They lead well. They lead by example and vocally. Although more powerful and different than a coach, who is a mere human being. The Holy Spirit has a very similar functions. Who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is the member of the Trinity and he is God. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are three persons that exist in, in God as one entity. The Holy Spirit is probably the most overlooked but the hands-on member of the Trinity. So many of us talk about God and Jesus but don't but, but we don't bring up the Holy Spirit as much as we should. Jesus warns his disciples that he would leave them with the Holy Spirit because his death was soon to come in Matthew chapter 21, Matthew chapter 16, verses 21 through 28. And John chapter 14, verses 15 through 31. As a result of Jesus' sacrificial death on the cross, those who believe in Jesus will now have the Holy Spirit living inside of them. Isn't that amazing? You may, want, you may be wondering about the Holy Spirit's capabilities. Again, remember, He is God. First, the Holy Spirit urges us, urges and prompts us to do something that the Lord desires us to do in our everyday life. To prompt someone means to cause someone to do something. Think of the Holy Spirit like your conscience. God speaks to us in so many different ways through the, whole, through the word of God, through people, through signs, wonders, and also the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31 reminds us that whatever we do, do it all for the glory of God. God allowed his son Jesus to die. Sorry. Oh my goodness. To die for our sins, 
And because we all have the opportunity to believe in Jesus Christ and make the Lord, make the Lord, make him the Lord of our lives. Also, Jesus' sacrifice enables us to repent of our sins and receive the grace of God. One thing we must realize is that God wants to have a relationship with his people and he desires to save us from ourselves. We must desire the same. We must be willing to listen and avoid allowing other things to clog our focus on God. Secondly, the Holy Spirit is our helper. For example, he prays on our behalf in times where we don't feel like it, in times where we don't feel like it, or don't have the words to say, or don't know how to say something in prayer, God will give us the strength and the words to say through the Holy Spirit. Also, he knows what we are saying. He Also, he knows what we are saying when all we can do is cry. God knows everything. His will must be done. Thirdly, the Holy Spirit teaches and reminds us of what we need to know. Maybe God has previously spoken to you about a particular person or a situation. The Holy Spirit is there to teach us and show us what was already taught and or needs to be taught. Fourth, the, whole, the Holy Spirit leads us into all truth. Jesus reminds us in John chapter 14, verse 6, that he is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. What is Jesus telling us? He is reminding us that we need him and we must believe in him in order to have eternal life. In this verse, he is showing us that when we live for him and when we, we, when we live for him, we will know the truth in a world where Satan uses many tools to bring about lies because he is the father of lies, Satan that is. As John chapter 8, verse, four, verse 44 tells us, when we know the truth, when we know the truth that comes from Jesus Christ through the word of God, the truth will set us free. As John chapter 8, verse 32 reminds us, there are three important tasks of the Holy Spirit to convict the world of its sin and call the world to repentance. To reveal, number, number two, to reveal the standard of God's righteousness to anyone who believes because Jesus Christ would no longer be present on earth. Verse three, to demonstrate Christ's judgment over sin. Amongst all of these amazing things that the Holy Spirit does for us as the body of Christ, he also gives us the fruit, the attributes, the attributes that we need to live like Christ on this earth. In addition, in addition, the Holy Spirit gives us power and peace. When trials come our way, the Holy Spirit reminds us of what God promises in the Bible. That is why it is so important for us to make a relationship with God a daily priority for us. Satan is never going to stop in his attempt to destroy as many souls as possible. So why should we stop growing in God? Similar to souls, similar to a coach, athletic coach, life coach, etc. Jesus left us with the Holy Spirit to lead, guide, and help us be more like Jesus Christ. So that we can ultimately receive eternal life in heaven. So don't neglect him. I want to leave you with this question. Are you willing to allow the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you in every aspect of your life? The Holy Spirit is there to lead us and guide us into all the truth. Don't allow distractions to get into the way. Don't, allow, don't believe the lies of Satan. I want to leave you some verses to read. Acts chapter 5, verse 3 through 4. John chapter 6, verses 41 through 44. 2 Peter, verses 3 through 9. Chapter, I mean, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. John chapter 3, verses 16 through 17. John chapter 14 through uh, verses 15 through 31. John chapter 16, verses 5 through 15. Romans chapter 1, verses 18 through 32. Romans chapter 8, verses 26 through 27. Isaiah chapter 46, verse 10. And Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Hey, allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide your life. Be blessed.